for wave equation we have so far discussed Cauchy problem. Cauchy problem is posed on Rd cross 0 infinity that is x belongs to Rd and T is positive. We have considered wave equation in 3 space dimensions namely D equal to 1, 2 and 3. In this lecture we are going to discuss wave equation when it is posed on not necessarily on Rd but on a subset of Rd. In this lecture we are going to restrict ourselves to D equal to 1. So we consider wave equation which is posed on sub intervals of R. Because the equation is posed on sub intervals of R they have boundaries and the problem that we are going to consider is what is known as initial boundary value problem. And we are going to solve it using first principles in this lecture. So the outline of the lecture is as follows. We state the initial boundary value problem with what are called Dirichlet boundary conditions in one space dimension that is in R. And then we solve this IV, IBVP uh, using first principles. I will explain what the first principle mean here. In the end we would like to express the solution obtained in the form of the D'Alembert uh, solution. Recall D'Alembert formula gave us a solution to the Cauchy problem in R. Now we would like to have a similar formula even for an IBVP that is the goal here. So IBVP on a bounded interval in R with the Dirichlet boundary conditions what is it? It is also called sometimes IBVP for a finite string remember the one dimensional wave equation we have modeled as trans as a model for the transverse vibrations of a string. So since the string is finite it is called finite string here 0 L that is the string position is 0 to L. So given functions phi which are which is in C2 on the interval 0 L and psi which is C1 on the interval 0 L please note the closed intervals here. Find a solution to the homogeneous wave equation it means the IBVP we are going to consider the homogeneous wave equation posed on the domain x in 0 L T positive with the initial conditions the initial displacement is phi x and initial velocity is psi x and Dirichlet boundary condition these are new compared to the Cauchy problem in R that is because we are considering x in the domain 0 L. So it has two boundary points namely 0 x equal to 0 and x equal to L and that there we describe u of 0 t equal to 0 and u of L t equal to 0. In other words this is the domain we are considering 0 L ok this is x this is t here we want that the wave equation to be satisfied homogeneous wave equation and this is t equal to 0 here we prescribe u x 0 and u t x 0 this is phi of x this is psi of x. And here these are the boundary points this is x equal to 0 and x equal to L. Here we prescribe that u of 0 t is 0 u of L t equal to 0. We have introduced this initial boundary value problem in a tutorial uh, in the lecture 4.3 earlier. So what to do with non-zero Dirichlet boundary conditions? The Dirichlet boundary conditions prescribe the values of the unknown function on the boundary. We are considering zero Dirichlet boundary conditions. An IBVP with non-zero Dirichlet boundary conditions may be transformed to an IBVP with zero Dirichlet boundary conditions, but we may have to pay a cost that will be introduce a source term and also modify the initial uh, speed and velocity. Uh, initial uh, displacement and velocity. So the PDE would become non-homogeneous but source term of course consists of a known function so that is something good and we will discuss this uh, question in a tutorial. Uh, what is the question? How to transform a problem with a non-zero Dirichlet boundary conditions to a problem with zero Dirichlet boundary conditions. So what about other boundary conditions? 
So, IBVPs with other boundary conditions may also be considered Neumann conditions uh, that is dou u by dou x at 0 t and dou u by dou x at l t are prescribed. In Dirichlet we are prescribing u 0 t and u l t instead of u we prescribe dou u by dou x at the boundary points x equal to 0 and x equal to l at the boundary x equal to 0 is actually a line okay, and x equal to l for all times they are prescribed positive times. Or Robin conditions which is a combination of uh, Dirichlet and uh, Neumann. So, alpha times u 0 t plus beta times dou u by dou x at 0 t this is prescribed and alpha u l t minus beta dou u by dou x l t they are prescribed. What are alpha beta? The real numbers alpha to be positive. So, any mix of these uh, types of boundary conditions may be considered. In other words what we are saying is uh, this is the domain that we are considering. Okay this is 0, this is L. Here we may have u of 0 t and here we may have dou u by dou x of 0 t uh, of L t. We may prescribe this. We may also prescribe something like this alpha u 0 t plus beta dou u by dou x L 0 t here and here you prescribe uh, for example u of L t. So, any mix of uh, conditions is also possible one can study. Finding solutions from first principles might become cumbersome for these uh, other boundary conditions uh, not so much for Neumann conditions, but for Robin conditions uh, it is going to be uh, cumbersome. Given any boundary conditions due to linearity of the wave equation one may find a solution to IBVP as a superposition of solutions to simpler problems. So, when we are when we have to solve an IBVP we should identify simpler problems out of them and then solve them and then superpose the solutions and that will be a solution thanks to the linearity of the wave equation or wave operator on IBVP for non-homogeneous equations and other domains. So, IBVP for non-homogeneous equation may be solved using the Hamel principle exactly as we did uh, for the Cauchy problem. We are studying the IBVP posed on an interval 0L that is only for convenience. One could also consider an interval AB, it is similar. One may ask uh, what about infinite intervals or semi-infinite intervals that means 0 intervals of the type 0 comma infinity that is much more simpler. So, that is why we are not studying that. I, instead we are studying a more complicated uh, which is a finite interval 0 L case. This is much simpler the methods that we are following in this lecture will apply and solution can be obtained in much simpler uh, manner. So, there are two methods that we are going to discuss to solve the initial boundary value problem. One is solution from first principles that is what we are going to discuss in this lecture. The starting point for this approach is the fact that solution to the homogeneous wave equation is of the type f of x minus c t plus g of x plus c t. That means, it is a superposition of a left moving wave and a right moving wave. Solution by the method of separation of variables that is another method this we are going to discuss in the next lecture and that is a very general more general method it does not assume a specific knowledge of the general solution of the problem uh, of the wave equation. This is a very general method it is applicable for many linear equations. We are going to see later on in the course that we will apply this for the Laplace equation and also heat equation. So, let us start discussion of the solution of IBVP from first principles. The main idea as explained before is that general solution to the equation wave equation homogeneous wave equation is a superposition of a right propagating wave and a left propagating wave that is u x t equal to f of x minus c t plus g of x plus c t. A general classical solution would be exactly this formula where f and g are c 2 functions. So, what is the action plan for us? find expressions for fg 
Of course, we are solving IBVP. So, therefore, naturally the expressions for them will involve the data in the problem namely phi and psi. How we get that? We have to use the initial and boundary conditions and find out the compatibility conditions that phi and psi must satisfy. It is actually not enough that phi is a C2 of 0L and psi is C1 of 0L as mentioned earlier that is not enough. They must satisfy some compatibility condition between them so that the f and g are C2 functions. So, what are the goals in this? Find expressions for the functions f and g, obtain a solution to the problem at each point of the strip 0 L cross 0 infinity, one sided strip. Okay. Usually strip is, uh, is like this infinite uh, thing, but no we are starting, we are stopping here. So, obtain solution here 0 L cross 0 infinity. Express f and g in terms of phi psi, find conditions under which f and g are C2 functions, and finally present the solution in the form of D'Alembert formula. Now, let us ask what is the information that we can get on f and g from initial conditions. The initial condition ux0 equal to phi x gives us fx plus gx equal to phi x always keep writing this domain for which this equality is valid the very important if you ignore this we can easily make mistakes. We have another initial condition which is ut of x0 equal to psi x. So, on differentiating u of xt we did this earlier exactly the same computation we did this while deriving the D'Alembert formula. So, u u t dou u by dou t of x t is by chain rule f prime at the point x minus c t into derivative of x minus c t with respect to t that will give us minus c. Similarly, g prime of x plus c t and derivative of x plus c t with respect to t is c. So, that is what exactly we have here. When you put t equal to 0, it reduces to this. So, integrating this last equation over the interval 0 to x will give us this expression minus f x plus g x equal to 1 by c integral 0 to x psi s d s minus f 0 plus g 0. So, now we have two equations in fact linear equations for the f x and g x one equation is here one equation is here. Therefore, we can solve for f and g. So, solving this system of equations gives us f xi equal to this and g eta equal to this. I am using different uh, notations here xi and eta because we know uh, normally we use xi for x minus ct that is what we are going to substitute later to get a formula uxt and here we are going to put g of x plus ct that is why we are using eta. Okay. Fine. So, when you write u of xt equal to f of x minus ct and plus g of x plus ct something will happen from here, but this will get cancelled. This is f0 minus g0 by 2 this is exactly minus of that. So, when you add it will be 0 it is a constant. So, finally, what do we have initial conditions determine f and g only on the interval 0 L. f and g are determined only on the intervals for xi in 0 L and eta in 0 L. And we dropped here the constant terms for the reason th that I have explained earlier. So, when we substitute in the formula u x t equal to f of x minus c t plus g of x plus c t what we get is the D'Alembert solution exactly D'Alembert solution. What is this uh, domain where xi is between 0 and l and eta is between 0 and l? that is exactly same as all those xt for which x minus ct is between 0 and l and x plus ct is between 0 and l. So, initial conditions determine solution by the D'Alembert formula, but the solution we obtain only for few xt not for all xt in the strip that we wanted to solve for 
it is only here in this region. That means solution is determined in this region which is written here x t in 0 L cross 0 infinity such that x minus c t lies between 0 and L and x plus c t lies between 0 and L. We have a figure on the next slide let us look at that and also the interpretation in terms of xi and eta okay xi between 0 L eta between 0 L. Look at this picture this is exactly the, this picture this is this is the region where the d'Alembert formula gives a solution. Okay. If you look at this, this is x minus c t equal to 0 and if you just write a line here that is x minus c t equal to L. So, this is xi equal to 0, so this is xi equal to L. So, xi lies between 0 and L. Similarly, eta, eta lies between eta equal to L is here, this, this line is eta equal to L and a parallel line here would be eta equal to 0. Okay common part of that is precisely this uh, triangular region, this triangular region that is where we have the d'Alembert solution. So, the initial conditions determine the solution in this triangular region. So, this picture is sometimes called uh, diamond picture strip as a union of diamonds in terms of xi eta coordinates where the characteristic lines are xi equal to constant and eta equal to constant. In terms of x t coordinate there are x minus c t equal to constant and x plus c t equal to constant. Observe that the values of f are needed on minus infinity 0 and g are needed on 0 infinity. Why is that? Let us look go back to the picture. Okay, this picture we obtain as you see uh, x minus c t equal to 0, x minus c t equal to minus l, minus 2 l and so on, minus 3 l and so on. Therefore, the values of f are needed because we have an expression f of x minus c t values are needed only from this l to infinity, minus infinity here. Similarly, if you look at g what do we need? is uh, here. This is x plus c t equal to 0, x plus c t equal to l here, x plus c t equal to 2 l, 3 l and so on. Therefore, since we have g of x plus c t, we need that g is defined on 0 comma infinity. That is all we need. So, values of f are not needed for positive uh, real numbers other uh, after l and the values of g are not needed for negative real numbers. And the various regions in this picture uh, the boundaries are the lines the characteristic lines. Now, if you see the 0 0 we have not used boundary conditions. That means boundary conditions do not influence the solution in the region 0 0. So, fix an x naught in 0 L, the information from the boundary x equal to 0 reaches the point x naught at time x naught by c. For example, let us uh, draw this, we will draw the picture at the end. And the information from the boundary x equal to L reaches the point x 0 at time because the distance to the boundary is L minus x naught speed is c therefore, L minus x naught by c is the time taken. Thus information from neither of the boundaries reaches the point x naught for all times t which is less than or equal to minimum of both of them, minimum of these two times. Information does not reach x naught and the region x 0 consists of such points x t. Okay, this is this is the point 0, uh, this is the point x 0, this is 0, this is L. So, the distance is x 0, speed is c therefore, the time is x naught by c. Okay, this distance is 
L minus x naught therefore the time taken is is here okay, L minus x naught by C. Of course, in this picture as you see x naught is very close to 0 than L that is why this time is less. If you have taken a y 0 here this will be the corresponding time y 0 by C and uh, this information from here will be here this time. In any case if you take the minimum of the times up to here the information does not reach and uh, this is true of every point in x t. Okay, set of all those x t is this the times and the spatial points they are the ones which are in the region 0 0. Now let us see what information we can get using the boundary conditions. One of the boundary conditions is u 0 t equal to 0. So what we get is f of minus c t plus g of c t equal to 0 because x equal 0 we get this equation. Now I observe here that f c t c is always positive speed t is positive so c t is positive minus c t is negative. So f can be made sense for a negative real number provided you know the g for the corresponding positive real number c t. What do I know about g? g we have already determined in the interval 0 l therefore now f can be given meaning or defined uh, or f is determined in the interval minus l to 0 because g is known on 0 to l that is the idea we are going to use. So we write f of zeta equal to minus g of minus zeta for zeta less than equal to this is of course true for every zeta but only thing is that I know the formula for g only when this minus zeta is in 0 l that is that there are two aspects here one this is a relation satisfied by f and g this is true for every negative zeta there is no doubt here this is true. But if do, do you know the expression for f that can be done only when zeta is in minus l to 0 because g is known only in 0 to l. Now let us use the other boundary condition u of l t equal to 0 substituting in the formula for u we get f of l minus c t plus g of l plus c t is 0 for t greater than or equal to 0. So this condition uh, how do we see you have l here this is a point l plus c t that means you travel c t to the right of l and you travel to the left side of l that is l minus c t l plus c t. So f at l minus c t plus g at l, l plus c t is 0 that means f at l minus c t is minus of g at l plus c t. See had it been the same function imagine it was uh, some function f of l minus c t plus f of l plus c t equal to 0 imagine this is something different from what we are considering here. Then this actually means what f of l minus c t is equal to minus of f of l plus c t. What does this mean? It means that the values at l plus l you travel c t distance to the right side and to the left side the values are tied like this. It just means imagine l equal to 0 what is it f of minus c t equal to minus f of c t. It means f is odd about 0 so and this condition is what is called f is odd about the point l. But here it is not the same f it is different f and g. Okay. So this will give us f of l plus zeta equal to minus g of l minus zeta for zeta less than or equal to 0 because c t can be any uh, positive real number therefore this zeta can be any negative real number. Our goal is to find expression for f and g right. So these are the information that we got this we got from the one boundary condition this we got from the another boundary condition. Now let us compute for zeta less than or equal to L f of zeta minus 2 L that is equal to minus g of 2 L minus zeta okay this is actually minus of the inside thing. So I am using the first equation now just this is the rewriting of the same thing L minus zeta minus L now I am going to use the second equation I need the argument to be negative right this argument is negative yes because zeta is less than equal to L zeta minus L is negative. So minus g of L minus any negative quantity is given by f of L plus that negative quantity 
okay, tan by second equation. But what is this? f of zeta. So, f of zeta minus 2L equal to f of zeta for every zeta less than or equal to L. What does that mean? We have L here. Okay. Take any zeta and take zeta minus 2L. The values of capital F are the same. It means it is a periodic function on the left side of L. So, if you know the value of capital F on this interval minus L comma L, you know the values everywhere, every negative number thanks to this relation. Okay, this follows just from the boundary conditions. So, if f is known on minus L comma L, then f is known on minus infinity to L. Now, for zeta greater than or equal to 0, let us show say similar thing about g. g of zeta plus 2L is minus f of minus 2L minus zeta by first equation and that is equal to minus of f of minus zeta because we already showed the periodicity. Okay. which is g of zeta. Therefore, if g is known on the interval 0 to L, then it is known everywhere 0 to infinity. Now, let us define f on minus L comma 0 using the boundary conditions. We have already noted how to define this. g is known on 0 L, therefore, f is known on minus L to 0 by this formula. Therefore, now f is known is determined on minus l comma l therefore, on minus infinity comma l. Now, let us do the other one for g, g is already known on 0 l, let us define it on l comma 2 l. So, that g will automatically determine due to the periodicity to 0 to infinity. Now, f is known on minus l comma 0, so we are going to use the second condition because this condition is saying I have L here, 0 here, minus L here. I want to define in this region right up to 2L in this region I want to define. Therefore, we uh, from the second equation we get this g eta equal to minus f of 2L minus eta for L less than eta less than or equal to 2L. G is known on 0 to L therefore, it is known on 0 infinity. So, please stop here and convince yourself about these relations various relations that we have derived. So, the information that we get and using both initial and boundary conditions as follows using initial conditions we got this formula for f on the interval 0 L using the boundary conditions we have extended uh, not extended we have determined f on the interval minus L comma 0. This is just the formula for g of minus xi into minus minus g of minus xi and the periodicity. On g similarly initially we have determined on the interval 0 L then using the second boundary condition we have got this expression on L comma 2 L and we have periodicity. So, now we need to uh, write the formula we have determined f and g everywhere. So, now we are going to write the formula for the solution. So, take any point x t in 0 L cross 0 infinity. Now, if you take somebody in the diamond picture a point in the diamond picture it is going to lie in some region right. It is going to some region means what? It is going to lie between uh, xi equal to uh, some number and xi equal to that number plus 1. Similarly, eta equal to a number and eta equal to that number plus 1. So, that is what we are setting up the notation here. So, x minus c t will belong to some interval of this type. In fact, unique m is unique in n union 0 okay, minus m l comma minus m minus 1 into l. Similarly, eta x plus c t that belongs to an interval of this type for some unique m. So, this is actually de determining the region m n. We have marked the region 1, 1, 1, 2 in that picture. So, a general region m n is characterized by this. 
okay. For example, I take uh, 2 comma 3 okay, this is my mn, m is 2 right. So, it lies between what xi equal to minus l to xi equal to minus 2 l, yeah it is here xi equal to minus l to xi equal to minus 2 l. What about eta? This point I have taken. So, it is going to lie between here which is cut eta equal to 4 l and eta equal to 3 l okay, and this is the region that we get finally. So, let xi belongs to uh, let xt belongs to 0 l cross 0 infinity let mn be such that xi is in this interval x minus it is in this interval x plus it is in this interval that is the region mn. Now we need to write f of x minus ct right but as such we have formula for f only on minus l l rest is by periodicity. So we are going to use periodicity and bring this value x minus ct into the interval minus l comma l. Similarly x plus ct we are going to bring it to 0 comma 2 l by some translations. So by the periodicity of f, f of x minus ct has this formula. F, uh, if m is even, it is f of x minus ct plus ml. If m is odd, it is m minus 1 at l. I request you to do these computations by yourself. Similarly, for g, we have an expression. Okay. So if m is even, x minus ct plus ml is in 0 l. Now we have to be careful because f and g are f is known on minus l comma l formulas are different on minus l to 0 and 0 to l similarly for g formula is different on 0 l and l to 2 l that is why we are making this uh, uh, more uh, finer classification if m is even then x minus ct plus ml is in 0 l if it is odd this is the one which uh, f uses so this will be in minus l 0 and I know the formula for f on that. So therefore f of x minus ct is given by f of this if m is even and f of this if m is odd. Similarly for g we can write down we get this formula. Now this is something that you must verify by yourself if m is even and n is even because I have to write now u of x t equal to f of x minus c t plus g of x plus c t. But the values of f and g depend on whether m and n are even or odd. So I have two cases for m and two cases for n. So in overall I will have four cases. So this is the expression for u, this is the expression in terms of phi and psi. m even n odd we get this and this is the final formula. This is for m odd and n even. Note the final formula is not in the d'Alembert form because d'Alembert wants only phi here, but there is a minus here and x minus ct here, but something else is here. So, we will do that later. So, let us see m odd and n odd again mixing the formula for f, f is this, g is this. So, this is the expression. Now, I am going to substitute the values of g and f that I know and that becomes this, this is the formula. So now the question is are they classical solutions? We obtained an expression for f and g and for u in the last 4 slides are they classical solutions? Are the functions f and g C2 functions? Since f and g are expressed in terms of phi and psi answers will depend on phi and psi. So we are assuming that phi is C2 of closed interval 0 L and psi is C1 of 0 L is this good enough? When is f a c2 function? This is what we know about f. Uh, there is no doubt about smoothness of f when you are not at these points like 0, l, minus l and integral multiples of l because inside functions are nice, this is nice, so it will be a smooth function. So the doubt is only at points which are like l, minus l, 0, 2l, minus 2l, etc. because that is where we have breaks in the formula. So, f is continuous at xi equal to 0 that means uh, let us see uh, 
here xi greater than or equal to 0 right. So, you pass to limit as xi goes to 0 what you get this integral term goes off what you get is half phi of 0 and here from here you get half minus half phi of 0 both have to be same if f, phi is, if f is continuous which means phi of 0 is 0. Now these are all similar considerations f of minus l equal to f of l if and only if phi l is 0. Please answer these questions for yourself. f is differentiable at xi equal to 0 if and only if psi of 0 is 0. f dash of minus l is f dash of l why do we even have this because it comes from here. If this holds for f of course it will hold for f dash f double dash and so on and that is true if and only if psi l is 0. f is twice differentiable at xi equal to 0 if and only if psi double dash of 0 is 0. Similarly, f double dash at minus l is same as f double dash at l if, if and only if psi double dash of l is 0. So, f is a C2 function if and only if the following thing happens phi and psi satisfy the following compatibility conditions. These are called compatibility conditions. Phi at the end point 0 and L are 0, psi is also 0 at the end point 0 and L, so is psi double dash. Under the above conditions and phi and psi the function g is also C2. So, we have a classical solution if phi satisfies these two conditions under these compatibility conditions. So, let us summarize our discussions in the form of a theorem. It is done on the next slide existence and uniqueness theorem. Let phi and psi have this smoothness. Further assume the following compatibility conditions, these three sets of compatibility conditions. The IBVP has a unique classical solution. This is IBVP remember it is a Dirichlet boundary conditions. If you are considering non-mean boundary conditions, the compatibility conditions will change. So, let us get the solution in the d'Alembert form that is another goal that we had. For that what we have to do is phi and psi which are defined only on 0 comma L we need to extend to R because we need to take phi of x minus ct, psi of x plus ct and so on. They should make sense that means phi and psi should be defined for every real number. Yeah. Uh, let phi naught and psi naught denote the extensions of the functions phi and psi respectively to the interval minus L0 as odd functions with respect to 0 and then as 2L periodic functions to R. So, phi 0 of x is minus phi of minus x, psi 0 of x is minus psi of minus x. This is what is defining or extending the function phi and psi as odd function to the interval minus L comma 0. After that we can extend it to R. Then u of xt has the d'Alembert form. This is exactly what we like, right? Phi 0 of x minus ct plus phi 0 of x plus ct by 2 plus 1 by 2c x minus c to x plus ct psi naught of s ds. This is exactly how the d'Alembert formula looks for the Cauchy problem in 1D. But now not phi and psi, but in terms of phi naught and psi naught, that is the only change. Let us look at an example of solution in the region 1, 0. 1 0 means m is 1 n is 0. So, this formula which I have taken from the slide where the solution uh, m is odd n is even I get this expression and this is a formula I get. Now, in terms of the extended functions it becomes this because uh, c t minus x will be in minus l 0 and we have extended phi 0 as an odd function therefore, this quantity is precisely phi 0 of x minus c t. This is between 0 L therefore, there is no change it is the same and this integral becomes this integral that is left as an exercise for you though I will be doing on some other domain later on. So, find the value of u of 1 by 2 3 by 2 where u solves the IBVP given here where I have given psi equal to x into 1 minus x phi is 0 
as usual uh, the Dirichlet boundary conditions which are 0 here. So, solution for m mod n naught will apply here because we have to look at c is 1. So, x minus t is half minus 3 by 2 that is minus 1, x plus t is 2. So, m equal to 1, n equal to 1 that is that is what you have to explain the reason I have written here. The formula is precisely this is which is here and it is a matter of computing this integral minus 1 by 6. Now let us get the solution using d'Alembert form because on the last slide we have used the formula which is coming from this slide which gives solution for m mod n naught. So, now we need to extend the, our function phi naught and psi naught, but phi naught is 0 no need to extend. So, the, this is the formula. So, we need to know what is psi naught. Now, this formula is half minus 1 to 2 psi naught of s. Now, psi naught is a odd function. Therefore, if you integrate between minus 1 to 1, it will be 0. Therefore, this integral is essentially from 1 to 2. On 1 to 2 how, how did we define psi by this, this manner. And then please do this computations by yourself you get the same of course you get the same answer. Now let us illustrate the solution in the region 1 comma 2 where we see the connection between the d'Alembert form solution and reflections. So region 1 2 is uh, algebraically given by these inequalities and solution is given by this. This you can write from uh, the slide where m is odd and n is even you get this. Now look at this uh, picture here. I am in this region 1 2 I take a point p. I want to find the u at x naught t naught p is x naught t naught it is in the region 1 2. Of course, region 1 2 is characterized by this uh, inequalities that you know. So, what I am saying here is how do how do I get this solution? Do I have to do every time uh, the m even n naught find which m which n etc. How it comes? Look at this point. Now through this point there are two characteristics which pass through. One is this uh, uh, pink color which is moving to the right side and this is the violet color which is moving to the left side as t increases. But what we have to do is we have to do a backward thing. So, take the point p we want to come towards x axis because that is where our initial data is there. So, therefore, follow this characteristic and come back you will hit the bound boundary. When you hit the boundary change over to the characteristic line from the other family and you hit this point. This computation can be easily done but after all these are straight lines and you know this equation x equal to 0 this is x equal to L. So, you come here and just one reflection you do you come here. Now, if you come from this side okay, come from this side you hit this and then switch over to the other family characteristic passing through that point and then you hit again this boundary and again you switch over here and call it R. Okay. Uh, so, this is L and this is R okay. and exactly the coordinates are identified what is R, what is L. Now, this is a formula that we have written down on the previous slide. Uh, no, the formula in the region 1 comma 2 is given by this. Now, uh, this is just for a placement where what is happening. So, minus L, 0, L, 2, L, 3 L. Now, x naught plus c t naught lies between 2 L 3 L. So, it is somewhere here and x naught minus c t naught is between minus L and 0. So, it is here, but what we have is c t naught minus x naught which is coming this side and this we are translating by 2 L so that we fit into 0 2 L interval. That is where we know the, the function f and g is right, f g is known on 0 2 L. So, this is x plus c t. So, g is responsible we come here. And what is L? C t naught minus x naught. What is R? Is this point. 
okay. Why are we doing this picture is because we want to get the Dalamert formula. In Dalamert formula what is integral that is between x0 minus ct0 to x0 plus ct0. So let us look at this is the integral we have this integral is nothing but minus of this just switching the limits you get this. Now this is the integral that appears in a Dalamert formula that I am writing as uh, between x0 minus ct0 to ct0 minus x0 that is from here to here and again from here to here and this piece is repeated so I subtract. But this piece is 0 because this is odd function and this is a symmetric interval around 0 so this is 0. Here it is odd as well as periodic therefore the this is an integral on length 2L interval so it will be 0. So what remains is just this in other words what we have is precisely the D'Alembert form. So this integral we got instead of L2R we got x0 minus ct0 x0 plus ct0. Now this is phi of x0 minus phi0 of x0 minus ct0 and this by periodicity is phi0 of x0 plus ct0. Okay, interpretation of the solution using reflection of waves, let x t be a point in the region Mn, then the formula is this, the L and R exactly as I suggested we have to come to L and R, but that is multiplied with minus 1 power m minus 1 power n respectively and this is 1 by 2 c integral L to R, L and R obtained by following characteristic lines backwards as described earlier. Let us also do one more point and try. Let me take a point here. Okay, so first thing is go like this. Of course, these are characteristic lines which is a family of parallel lines, so can't do much. So this point you can compute the coordinates, this is L. And let's do the R. Okay, done. R, okay. So this here Mn, our Mn is 2, 2. How many uh, reflections we made? One reflection here and uh, two reflections. Similarly here, one reflection for this side and two reflections. So this is actually the number of reflections that we are going to do. You can identify this L and R and the formula as before is applicable. What is the formula? minus 1 power m in this case it is 2 into phi at this point L plus minus 1 power again n is 2 phi at r by 2 plus 1 by 2 c integral L to r psi s t s. This formula holds is a very easy way to determine the solution. So let us summarize what we did. We considered the IBVP with Dirichlet boundary conditions. It is solved from so called first principles. We are calling it first principle because uh, we have obtained to at the beginning we have obtained a solution to the homogeneous wave equation by transforming into the system of characteristic coordinates where the equation read W xi eta equal to 0 and solution was a function of xi plus a function of eta. That is why we are calling this first principles. Uh, and the same problem may also be solved using the ideas presented in uh, tutorial uh, which is uh, called lecture 4.3. There we did a problem 1 as an application of that problem to solution of IVP. This IVP can also be solved. Thank you.